first of all, I hope you watched last week. I hope you watched the online service last week, A Cry for Freedom. A compelling um, that we need to re- that we need to cry. We need to cry for freedom. We we have um, we have the picture of freedom without real freedom. Because the only real freedom is not by a declaration of independence. It's where the Spirit of the Lord is. We, in the Spirit of the Lord, is, although it's omnipresent, it is not manifest in many people's lives. It's not manifest in our nation. In places and pockets, but not uh, in mass. It's why we need to cry for freedom. It's why we... There's a compelling to cry for revival. We desperately need it, man. We desperately need revival. Not a momentary visitation by the presence of God, but something that changes an entire environment that changes the way we live. I still believe that we are a forerunning generation to the greatest move of God that the world will ever see before the eternal reign of Christ and his kingdom. I do believe that we are a forerunner generation to the greatest calling of souls and lives that there's ever been. I don't always feel like it. I'm so thankful for the words you spoke this morning. I don't always feel like it. It don't in anywhere look like it, but I've I've felt it in my spirit that I believe that we are, we're at a forefront of the most incredible move of God that there's ever been. Some of the, the testament to that is the last four years have been extremely hellish. They have not, I'm not just talking about personally, I'm talking about for the body of, Matter of fact, I believe that God gave me something in, in prayer, uh, in the intercessory prayer in my office a bit ago that, um, uh, well, I might share it. I might actually do a social media live thing or something and share it. Um, but we need, we cannot relent on repentance. We cannot relent on a cry. As a matter of fact, we can't even uh, maintain the same pace that we have. We need to turn up the heat. Um, we do. We need to put fire on the altar of our lives and crying for a revival. So I, I say that, and 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 I bring up something that I don't get into a, a, an awful lot. But we had um, something extremely putrid and heinous happen yesterday in our nation. Um, and I'm here as, as an apostolic and a prophetic voice, but in a fathering spirit to remind you of something. What took place yesterday, um, should never happen anywhere, anytime to anybody. I don't care who they are. I don't care what they stand for. I I don't, I I don't, uh, you know. It should never happen. <clears throat> but it's the evidence of the wickedness we live in and the growing wickedness that is expressing itself and manifesting itself regardless of who they are, where they are, what color they are, what background they have, whatever else. And <laughs> We have a responsibility um, not to enter into it, but to stand above it. And that to be a presence of a beacon. You know, I was, I've been on the coast several times over the last couple of weeks, and there's this thing they put on shorelines that help guide ships in in the fog called a lighthouse. You can see that lighthouse from everywhere on the island or the beach or what I mean, it's visible from everywhere. It stands above everything. And it calls things to it. Are you following me? It 
<clears throat> that lighthouse would not be able to function and at its purpose nor at its capacity and fulfill its assignment if it was the, at the same level of the rest of the buildings on the island. And it doesn't even make a sound. It just stands above and shines its light. If you've been around here and been around me long enough, I, I, I preach, I stand for, and I have been set by a kingdom, not a religion and not a, not a natural government. This church is my family, which means this church is not here by the assignment of a religion or a natural government. This church is a representation of the growing body of the government of the kingdom of God. And one of the things that we have to understand about a kingdom that we're entering into uh, in a few months, and it's the reason why things happened that they did yesterday, in a few months we will enter into the most democratic um, operation that you can enter into, which is a vote of the people. And the danger of being raised in an environment of a democratic philosophy, it is, it is the very presence of an antagonist thinking to a kingdom philosophy, which makes it extremely difficult for people who have been indoctrinated by a democratic mindset to embrace the kingdom of God. Because we have grown up under the marketing of Burger King, but governmentally, your way right away. And we get so wrapped up into believing in November that it's going to be your way right away. And we, so it, 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 we don't understand the, 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 the futility of the spiritual seed that is, uh, that we've been raised under without even, uh, you know, without ever really being sitting in a class of education that teach us what democracy is, we have been raised in its culture that it's become our culture. And when I say our, I'm talking about personally. And we, uh, and we give our way into its thinking. We believe that we can affect atmospheres by a vote. And let me, let me explain something to you. Your vote is an opinion. I mean, y'all ain't hearing me. Your vote is nothing more than your opinion. I'm going to say it again. Your vote is nothing more than your opinion. Or maybe you ain't even grown enough to have your own opinion. You borrow somebody else's. But hear me say this, whether it's that or whether it is yours, they're both wrong in the kingdom of God. And it's one of the things that cripples us from being able to really understand the Bible. And the Bible is the written word of God. It is the written expression of God's mind and God's heart. The church, I'm not talking to the world, but the church, the church in, in, in America has struggled to enter into the heart and the mind of God because it functions by a democratic thought process. Are you following me? And so we, we have been raised whether it was by your parents or whether it was by your culture, you have been erased believing that your opinion matters and you should have one. But in a kingdom, the only opinion that matters is the king. 
Citizens in the kingdom can have their opinion, but they'll never be effective in the kingdom while functioning by their opinion. Paul used some language that I think we don't really understand the depth of its meaning, but he said, I'm an ambassador in chains. He expressed some of the futility of the wrestling with his flesh and maybe even his opinion and his soul by the uh, the communication that sometimes he laid out, listen, the things that I want to do, I don't do. The things that I do want to do, I, I, I don't do, I do want to do it. So on as a and express this wrestling between the spirit and the flesh. What I love about Paul is that Paul always gave way to his spirit because he said, I'm an ambassador in chains. An ambassador, in, first of all, an, an ambassador is a foreign diplomat or a diplomat from a country to a foreign nation. We don't have ambassadors in America. We have ambassadors from America. The ambassadors of America are located in the embassies of other nations. Are you hearing me? And those ambassadors that represent nations, they are sent from a home nation to a foreign nation. And the embassy is set up for that ambassador to do what to dwell in. And then that ambassador is a representative, not of himself, but he is a representative of his own government in that foreign nation. And when an ambassador speaks in a foreign nation, if there's a U.S. ambassador that is in China and he speaks, he is not representing himself. He's representing the entire nation of America. And so he has to be very conscientious that he doesn't speak his opinion about China, but he only speaks the policies of America while in China. And if an ambassador that has been sent ever speaks contrary to the policies of America, he is revoked and recalled. Which means that an ambassador in a foreign nation is never permitted to to be moved by the affairs of the country they have been sent to and begin to develop their personal opinions about their environment. I ain't getting no help in They are only permitted to speak what their home nation sent them to speak. Jesus said, I only say what I hear the Father say and I only do what I see the Father do and I'm curious I would love for you to search the scriptures and come back to me maybe sometime this week and tell me where Jesus began to have an opinion about the local government When did Jesus get involved in determining who would be Caesar? Who would be the the governor, Pilate? He just simply said, hey, you render under Caesar what's Caesar, but under God what's God's. And you'll be able to tell by the image on the coin. Are you following me? (laughs) And so, what I'm here to tell you, at least for Rejuvenate Church, uh, I'll just, I guess, cut to the chase. I don't know if we're getting it or not. But we don't represent anything of ourselves. We represent our home government. 
And we're only permitted to speak the policies of our home government. We might can develop an opinion because it's the nature of humanity, but we cannot function by our opinion. Which means that I can't be expressive of my opinion. Or I damage the influence my king sent me with. And my influence is not my influence, but it's been delegated. So it's his influence that has been given to me. I don't care if your circle is 200 people, 2,000 people, 4,000 followers on Facebook, or 20,000 on Instagram. Whatever influence you have was delegated to you by God. So it's very foolish in a time like we are in where we have been called out, separated, and sent to be ambassadors in chains of the glory of God, to be forerunners to revival and find ourselves meddling in the rhetoric of the government we've been sent to. And it's easy for us to become conflicted and be um, both diluted and distracted by party, by race, or by religion. And your identity lies in none of the three. For there was not a religion consulted when you were formed in your mother's womb. Nor was there a race consulted when you were formed in your mother's womb. There was not a political party consulted when you were formed in your mother's womb. Yet he knew you before he formed you. And in his image, before the world began, he predestined you to be formed into the likeness of his son, Jesus Christ. Who neither bowed to a political party, a race, an ethnicity, a people group, but came, watch, not to bring peace, but a sword. I am I'm all of them. For the dividing of the spirit and the soul, the flesh. Will you hear me? And so, we need to be really, really conscientious about our resolve of who we belong to. I'm, I'm talking to you as daddy right now. You need to think twice before you share an opinion. You need to think twice before you begin to, uh, uh, to whatever, get involved in, in whatever happened yesterday and this happened or this didn't happen. I wish this or did I, 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 what, by Trump here, Biden here. I don't, you come at me with that mess, we're going to have problems. Do you hear me? Because we are an ambassador in chains. And if we don't realize the brevity of the hour, we will miss our moment by being caught up in the distraction of the narrative. Yeah, yeah, Bree. Let me tell you something. If Trump is in office, it will not change your life. If Biden is in office, it will not change your life or whoever else. It may affect some of your circumstances, but the only thing that has the ability to change your life is the presence of the living God. And it's high time that the church actually becomes the lighthouse. A city set upon a hill. Salt and light. We don't wave our flags. We don't put our bumper stickers. We don't get involved in the rhetoric and the foolishness of the activity that's going on. I don't care if you had an opinion about yesterday. You need to keep it to yourself and surrender it in repentance before God. What you need to do is recognize yesterday and, and, and many, many days that lead up to yesterday and many days that will follow from yesterday, the foolishness and the evil and the darkness that is present in our nation, which is the very reason why you have been sent. And how foolish is it for us 
to be commissioned as a doctor and become one of the sick. Do you hear me? We've been on the coast a, a few times over the last few weeks, some for vacation, some for ministry. And no, it, it makes no difference. I don't know what it is about when people go to the beach, but it seems like they let all their hair out and their booties. I've seen more hungry rear ends in the last three weeks than I've eaten a hole right in their britches. But seriously, I go through these, uh, you know, these towns, and and there's there's political flags flying everywhere, everywhere. I'm like, it's so blatant, but you ain't got it, kind of. Gonads with your presence. You just want to hide behind a shut door and fly your flag or your bumper sticker. Get on Facebook and share your opinion, but you don't ever actually want to enter the issue and deal with it with authority in the presence of God. And I, it, 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 I just thought about I thought about the, the way that we, we bumper sticker ourselves to death, we flag ourselves, whatever, even the statements that we make. You do realize that when you, when you're whatever, whatever you enter into, the arguments, the the the, the congestion, the division, the whatever it may be, uh, you 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 do realize that you are entering into the prophecy of the age, by the spirit of the age, and you're flying a banner over your life. And if you fly a banner over your life, then he is not Jehovah Sabe. I fly, fly. He is not the banner over my life. He is not the one that wages war for me. Watch this. If you uh, surrender your allegiance to whatever name or whatever government, your, your democratic government, it is their responsibility to defend you. For whatever you surrender your allegiance to, it becomes their responsibility to defend you. Y'all ain't getting me. For if I surrender my allegiance to where I've been sent, it's up to the sick to defend me. But if I surrender my allegiance to my kingdom, it is up to my king to defend me. If I surrender my allegiance to the sick, then it's up to the sick to provide for me. But if I surrender my allegiance to my king, it's up to my kingdom to provide for me. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Righteousness is not right living, it's right order. It's getting up under the right thing. When I get up and under the right thing, I can live right. So I need to be careful. This ain't my message today. I guess now I'm not even going to get to it. This is my message today. <laughs> I'm telling you. Wait. I, I'll be doggone. Let me just say this, and yes, maybe I'll speak selfishly for a minute. I have labored in this city for this ministry for nine years. I have fought darkness in hell. Other people have fought it with me. Some people have fought it with me and they're not here anymore. Some people are fighting it with me now and they're here. Either way, it's been nine years. I still believe, even though I don't like it, I still believe that I and this ministry was sent to this city. 
Maybe not just to this city, maybe to this region. Maybe, in fact, not just to this region, maybe to this nation. I don't know. But I'll be doggone if this house will get involved in creating its own mountain. It has to move. Are you hearing me? We can't fly our flags and have our opinions and believe for revival. You can't. You can't get involved in the banner. You can't get involved in race wars and in, in, in political parties and be a vessel of revival. You can't. See, Chronicle says, if my people who are called by my name, the problem is, is we don't know which name we belong to. And when we don't know which name we belong to, we don't know which name to call to. And maybe it's why our prayers aren't heard. Because I'm praising Trump in one minute and trying to cry out to God in the next. Or I'm praising Biden in one minute and trying to cry out to God the next. Or I'm praising white and trying to cry out. Or praising black and trying to cry Whatever it may be. I'm fighting wars. With the very war I was sent to cease. And so if you got, now I'll just say this. If you've got questions for me or you want to share your opinion about what I'm saying, I'm open and available to do that. It'll probably stay your opinion. It won't become mine. But I'll hear it. I'll give you my time and I'll hear it. But if you can tell me some valid reason why the people of this house who are called to be vessels in this city are also to be banner waivers for any other political regime or movement, do your best to convince me. I'm not telling you come November, whatever it is, that you can't have your personal opinion. But there's also a reason that they make you go to your own little booth. It used to be faux pas. When I first started voting, it was like faux pas. If you mentioned who you were voting for while you were in that line, that's your opinion. You just keep it to yourself. But if you, whether you do or don't, I'll, I'll leave that to you. I'm not telling you one or the other. I am telling you whatever you do, you keep that opinion to yourself, but it better not override your sin assignment. And I'll just be honest, maybe this is me. I th- Justin, can I borrow you for a minute? Come here. I'm Corelli. This dude right here, right now, from head to toe, is representing this house. And Mike, Mike Jordan, too. So he don't have to say a word and he's already representing something other than himself. Maybe I'm being selfish again, but my name is tied to that. And if you're a brother and sister in this house, a son or a daughter in this house, your name is tied to that. And people are learning who Rejuvenate Church is. They might not, not everybody knows, might not everybody care, but they're learning. You hear me? They're learning. Don't get involved. Evaluate your opinion and say, does it matter as much as my sin assignment? Does it matter as much that I'm damaging the influence that my brothers and sisters or my my pastor has worked 
to fight through the weeds, to build an integrity for the presence of God. We're always representing something other than ourselves. Always. And the moment that you, you confess publicly, if you've got on your Facebook info page that you are Christian, it doesn't say you're a Jason. It doesn't say you're a John, a Johnian, a Bianchian. It says you're a Christian. So I have just, what's this? I have not just associated my life with his name or my life would change. I have tried to associate his name with my life. Which means that I have tried to bring his name into my political views. I've tried to bring his name into my race battles. And that ain't nothing he ever signed up for. He stands above. How are we the head and not the tail, but we identify with the tail and not the head? We prophesy a lot. We believe very little because our belief is actually expressed by our life and not by our language. I'm telling you, you can come back out, but this is why I vote for them, and this is why. This is the better of two worlds. No, they're not. For a house divided amongst itself cannot stand. And a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Why is America stumbling? A double-minded man that wrestles between two opinions. Maybe, just maybe, God is causing America to stumble a little bit till it just falls to its knees. And somebody's got to be there as an ambassador. But, but, but. May we ought to reverse it. I pledge allegiance to my God for the United States of America. And to the kingdom by which I stand, one nation under God, undivided, with liberty, where the Spirit of the Lord is. Do you hear my heart? What happened yesterday? God forbid anything like that happen anymore, but there will be some type of battles. It ought not to provoke us to response. It ought to provoke us to repentance and weeping when I see what happened what took place yesterday I can't do nothing but just weep at the at at the expression of darkness and cry out to, to God and say Lord how much longer have mercy on us I'll say again and I'll shut up and we'll get out of here. When you enter into whatever discussions, when you enter into opinions, when you fly your flags, have your arguments, share your opinions, you hang a banner over your head. I promise you this, if you got Christian on your profile, 
and whatever president and vice president as your photo, I promise you they're remembering the photo more than your bio. I promise you if you enter into your opinion sharing, they're remembering your opinion sharing over your day of salvation. It's the banner that you hang over your head and I will not stand for that banner hanging over this house. I promise you this, there's a lot of first church of the frozen chosen around the corner that you can go there and they will help you fly your banner because they're going to stand in their pulpits and tell you who to vote for. You can go there. I get folk to get angry at me for saying this, but you can leave here just as easily as you came. I don't like it. I don't want it. I want everybody here. I want everybody in Anderson here. But I want them here surrendered to a king and not to a religious affiliation. We have allowed religion like I preached to you and taught you two weeks ago we have allowed religion and we have used it to push our agendas and I'll be doggone if you're going to sit in this house and push a political or a race agenda or an, an, um, um, an activism mindset or whatever it may be no we're going to be surrendered to the king of kings and the lord of lords and it will be his mind that I will have an opinion of Revelation 22, when I was thinking about all this, this is something that popped in me. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Watch this. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. Why? Because they need no lamp nor light of the sun, for the Lord God gives the light and they shall reign forever. Nowhere in Revelation 22, 1 through 4 that it says that the Democrats shall reign forever. It does not say that the Republicans shall reign forever. The Libertarians. It does not say that the white folks shall reign forever. It doesn't say the black folks shall reign forever. It says those with his name on their foreheads. What banner are you flying? Watch, for we cannot be foolish enough. We cannot be so unconscious of the word of God to believe that we wind up at Revelation 22 by happenstance, but that it comes through vessels of the ambassadors that were sent. We wind up at Revelation 22 because in July of 2024, there were people who had his name already on their foreheads. For the healing of the nations, light to the world. Do you receive it? I'm going to add one more since I'm already here. I might as well throw in another wrench. Can I do that? 
I had this two weeks ago. I saw I'm, I'm done except for this. You can ask me why I don't have time to explain it all right now. This is gonna. This is also gonna probably throw some of you a little curveball. How many of you have watched The Chosen at some point in the last four years? I don't know if I've ever done this before either. I strongly urge you to be careful watching it. I have never been more disgraced at something that misrepresented our kingdom and our king more than I wa- when I watched the first or second episode of the new season. And I was already rumbling from a couple of things from the previous seasons. Disgusted. And immediately the, the, the Spirit of the Lord said, told me that's not me. That's not me. That's not me. I've, I've, I don't know that I've ever gotten up before and say, hey, other than having a, a kind of a a big umbrella of you need to be conscious of what you watch on Netflix. You, I don't know that I've ever stood up and talked about one thing or what, you know, you need to really be careful what you absorb about that show if you continue watching it. There are liberties taken in their dramatic presentation that do not represent Christ. They do not represent our kingdom. They are taking liberties to do a couple of things to create dramatic effect. And they are taking liberties to attempt to subvert things they cannot explain. Trying to explain things through drama that they cannot explain. And so they're misrepresenting the heart of our king. And his nature. You can come ask me about it. I'll be happy to tell you individual things that I don't like, but it's. You can ask my wife. I don't know where where she's at, but I said, I'll never watch it again. It was turn it off now. I'll never watch it again. It's an abomination to who God is. And it's fooling millions upon millions upon millions of people an avenue that God granted them to tell a story has become an avenue of resource and finance and wealth and fame. And it is not properly representing our king. You make the decisions you want to make when you're all in within your household, but I'm telling you, you need to be, you need to be keenly conscious. You need to be vigilant You need to pray and watch, watch and pray. You need to be careful because it's going to twist. Listen, it didn't take but just a little seed in the garden to twist the word of God. Just a little twist. It's all it's looking for to cause you to doubt the nature of our king. Well, hallelujah, this was good. I'm just the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. Lord, may your name banner over this house. May your name banner over our lives, over this house. We pledge our allegiance to you. Lord, I don't want anything to keep us from the glory of God that we have been sent to channel for this hour, this day, this season. Lord, I don't want us to be a stumbling block to the greatest move of God there has ever been. I don't want us to be an offense to the purpose of Jesus Christ. As for me in this house, we will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. And I bless you as you go.